Welcome to Why Leadership Fails, a podcast where there is no typical gyan, no stereotypical tales of glory. Instead, we bring to you unscripted and unfiltered conversation about real life experiences of leaders navigating challenges and setbacks. episode is about a fascinating story of an accounting professor who went on to become a real estate tycoon curious to know how well stay tuned as we unfold this unique tale of transformative leadership we are honored to have with us today a true visionary an indian billionaire a leader who has transformed the essence of real estate landscape in india let's welcome dr niranjan hiranandani founder and md the hiranandani group Hello sir. Thank Such you, an Bhav. honor to have you here. Thank you Bhavna. Happy to be with you. Thank you so much sir. Firstly sir, I should tell you that your entire first generation entrepreneurial journey is truly inspirational and very remarkable. What comes to mind is that you know how did you really start to establish or start thinking about you know becoming an entrepreneur, establish the Hiranandani group and become a pioneer in mixed use townships? Well, long story, but uh, to cut it short, uh, I belong to a family of medical practitioners. My father was a famous uh, ear, nose, and throat surgeon, a leading ENT specialist, Padma Bhushan, uh, Dhanvantri Award winner, medical family, and nobody in the world of business in our family never thought about it. Uh, but my elder brother was a doctor, and uh, and I realized my father and he worked so hard. I really thought that's not the line for me. I don't think I can really work so hard, uh, not knowing really what I was getting into. But by default, I took up commerce, and I did my BCom. And then my father and his friend, uh, Mr. Nani Palkiwala, very famous uh, yes. lawyer, persuaded me to study for chartered accountancy. So I even taught in the Institute of Chartered Accountants, and that's why you called me a teacher, a professor. Right. So I did that also. But uh, ever since I was in college, I really thought that I would get into the world of business, because many of my father's patients, you know, were very, very uh, famous, uh, rich, and looked fantastic. You know, the Billa family were all patients of my father's, the Mafatlal family, the other families, and all that, and they were very close to my father. And I would have a chance to meet them, and I said, I think I could become one of those. Not realizing what the story could be, but uh, later on I took interest even in my BCom. I used to do internships uh, in factories, so I went to the Gwalior factory, uh-huh. the uh, Century Mills factory, and I interned over there for two months during my holidays. You know, th- for two years or three years, and. In reality, that was uh, the turning point of understanding what the business of business was. Um, to tell you the truth, we started with the textile business. So we put up uh, about 400 power looms in Charkov, Chandiwali, and that was the starting mm-hmm. point. Mm. Um, and some investments, small investments into real estate. All right, simultaneously, so you. And what happened to the textile business? Well, there was a time after about two years when we were doing badly in both, and I had to sell off one. Didn't know which one to sell off, and I got a notice from the union uh, of the factory asking for a hundred percent increase in wages. Wow! So I contacted the union and asked them. I said, "Do you think there's a mistake of one zero that you want a ten percent <laughs> increase, and actually you're asking for a hundred percent?" They said, no, no, no. And those were the days of Datta Samant and the union leader, uh-huh. which were really after the textile mills. So he said, no, it is 100% increase in wages, what we demand. So a decision which I couldn't make easily as to which of the businesses to leave uh, was done by this letter which came from the union. I'm sure they would have been happy with the 10% increase if sure. I had negotiated it. But since I used that as a decision making to sell off the uh, textile unit and uh, by default, Uh, the, the residuary was real estate, so I had to work hard in order to make that successful. So sometimes, you know, decisions come your way rather than you think you have made it. 
and rest is history of course yes thank you so sir uh, talking about challenges and setbacks you know you did speak about how there was a setback in the textile business and you actually pivoted that was a turning point well even in real estate for that matter i'm sure you've got like you know four decades of experience in that there would be challenges and setbacks uh, you know we know a few where there was uh, during that time of course real estate after bollywood was known to have the underworld alliance we read about the controversy of the pavai land scam that happened how did you really navigate these challenges and uh, you know how did it influence your approach towards business well uh, early stages of life uh, the setbacks were cruel and uh, they really took uh, a toll on me completely because uh, wasn't used to the idea wasn't used to having criticism and negativism when i had done no wrong uh the cyclical systems of business as compared to a professional who works uh, on a regular basis and doesn't right. have too much debt to carry with himself uh, or herself uh was a different story and uh, it wasn't easy to really look at that in the face uh so i was uh, taken aback in the earlier stages of life where uh, there were so many pitfalls uh difficulties one of them which you mentioned but there were plenty more Sure. The best part was that uh, we worked on a very ethical system of working, and we were fair to our customers, fair to our suppliers, our contractors, our bankers, and other people who would, were partners with us. And by and large, uh, over a period of time, uh, we realized that uh, even in bad times, there were people who did support, not necessarily the persons I supported, uh, but somewhere down the line. Uh, the law of karma worked so if you have done good to people at the time when you are in real difficulty somebody or the other comes your way to help you and not necessarily the same persons but having said that uh, your question uh, about how really you maneuvered um, the earlier stages were more difficult the later mm. stages were much more difficult the <laughs> later later stages are much much more difficult so nothing is easy So yeah. when you have pitfalls in life, you have to stare it in the face, look at it, uh, hold yourself, and then move forward. So I think uh, we all get affected yes. negatively when things go wrong with us, especially when it's uh, somebody close and near to us. So all these things have happened in my life, and not once, but several times. Uh, there are also vagaries of the markets. Hmm. So the markets are never, never steady. They're True. cyclical. Yes. You could have uh, various issues that could really come war, and uh, you know the situations which have taken place in the last couple of years, where you have uh, uh, the markets going down, uh, demand coming down, and then coming up. But over a period of time, you realize and understand how most of these cycles can be taken care of. Sure. But in reality, when the pain comes, it hurts. So I mean, Absolutely. we are we are human. we are human like anybody else and uh, uh the only thing is when you're big the pitfalls are bigger so uh, you know the fall is greater the higher you fly the more distance from the ground you are and uh, you're likely to die more easily <laughs> than any other person who's uh, just jumping a few feet above the ground True. so so yeah uh, pitfalls happen and cyclical effects take place and you learn to live by the situation that you are stare at it and take it by the horn right absolutely, i think that absolutely, is a very absolutely. very strong statement and you know a very strong address to the audiences you know who go through smaller challenges setbacks and then you know they do not even move ahead they just give up so thank you for sharing that story it's but really but you know i mean uh, uh, there's no question of giving up i don't think uh, people should because uh, life is like that and uh, it's not necessary in business it can happen in life itself yes. you know uh, i've seen youngsters uh, who have boyfriends and girlfriends get disappointed and hurt and can be uh, ter- terrible setbacks when uh, you know their friends are lost yes. and they leave them uh, for good reason or bad and uh, there are people who are mature and have uh, lived in their 60s and 70s and they have a problem with their children or grandchildren <laughs> Uh, or any other relationships in terms of it whether it's in the world of business or it is in terms of personal relationships we all feel hurt if something goes wrong and uh, nothing wrong with that because we are human and we are bound to have it but 
time uh, actually solves a lot of these issues, but you have to learn to uh, get feel that hurt at that time, but then be able to able to again get up and walk again. Right. In fact, very interesting, and you know, taking on from here. So you've been a multi generational entrepreneur. You know, you deal with teams, you deal with clients who've been baby boomers, millennials, and now Gen Z. You're very active on social media. I personally follow you, you know, across on LinkedIn and everywhere else. How do you really adapt your leadership lifestyle to resonate with these different generations, whether personally or professionally? Uh, I think I learned it from my father. Uh, he always would be able to connect with any person or any generation of people. And uh, uh, so I think it's part of the genes. So I can uh, be very, very close to my grandchildren and play with them <laughs> and probably do a tumble and a, some roll on the bed with them. Wow. And I would be equally comfortable addressing IIT students, VGTI students, IIM students, uh, college students, PhD students. And I have lectured to primary school uh, children too. So I do have a very... Uh, Mm, what should I say, easy to connect to mentality and I'm able to relate to the age and days that they have uh, and I enjoy with them much more than I think I enjoy with the elder people. So uh, they're all fun. And the best part is actually that the children nowadays are good learners. True. And uh, it's surprising. I'll, I'll tell you a short story. I was in Pune when uh, I went there for a Naretko conference. It must be about... 10, 15 years ago, I don't remember exactly, maybe 10 years ago. And somebody came to me in that conference that I was lecturing and came and touched my feet and he said, uh, youngster, um, must be in his uh, early 30s, maybe just 30. And he said, uh, sir, uh, you know, uh, I had you had lectured in NMMIS in the owner business uh, conference, which was there. And I was going to do some other business. But after I heard your lecture, I decided to become a builder, developer. <laughs> and uh, I looked around in Mumbai and I couldn't uh, really do it because it was too big for me. So I moved and migrated to Pune and I took up small plots and it was within my reach to be able to do it. And now I am a good builder. And, uh, you know, I learned from him. I, I learned what you said and I took up the lines which you are and I'm doing extremely well. Wow. So I want to thank you for actually, uh, you know, guiding me to get into the world of uh, real estate. Uh, it was very heartening to know Absolutely. that one could influence uh, somebody to uh, take up a line and uh, a positive way in order that you got to do it. Yes. So I do find that the youngsters are... Mm, if you connect with them correctly, are very anxious to learn, you know, and uh, it's wonderful, actually. So I have a great connect with uh, students, with uh, children, and now grandchildren. Wow, <laughs> that's lovely. Yeah. It's so, it's actually, you know, very heartening to know that you know, somebody gets inspired and actually gets into that particular sector and is, you know, expanding it further. Well, talking about real estate, you're not confined only to that. You ventured into various you know, diverse sectors, data centers, warehousing, a lot of innovation, you know, that I've read about. So how is that impacting the business and what is the future, you know, that you foresee for the Hiranandani group with respect to the innovation strategy? <laughs> well, some things come your way, some things you learn, some things you see, some things you get inspired by. Uh, Prime Minister Modi is uh, a great inspiration. Look sure. at the kind of work that he's doing and the way he's directing. Truly. I think any person who is today living in India is going to be inspired, whether he or she is a professional, whether he or she is a startup, whether he or she is a business person or various things. In every line of business, there's an opportunity which is changing. And the changes are happening so rapidly that you can't imagine. Uh, when uh, GST came the way, the yes. barriers of Octroi and others disappeared. So the whole thing about logistics, warehousing, industrial parks came by way. Yes. And we saw that as an opportunity. So we set up a platform along with Blackstone, 50-50 uh, partnership with them in order to set that up. So that's an opportunity that mm. we saw. And uh, the, my next generation children are also uh, people like that. My daughter is now based in uh, London. Oh. She does international investments and uh, 
all over the world in America in Russia in Europe and all other places of the world so she's based over there darshan my son though he mm. invests a lot into india he's based in dubai and he's built the second tallest residential tower in the world wow yes and uh, you know he had built the tallest one and then the sheikh uh, built the one next <laughs> to him and this thing quite rightly so and uh, did a taller one than that uh, but uh, the fact that uh, i think uh, people around me should be uh, better than me and entrepreneur so i look forward to that kind of uh, thing wherein uh, my people who work with me people who associate with me all need to use me as a platform to actually do better spin off to the moon so wow. to say that's so, a great thought yeah so i think that's an opportunity to attend to and i'm collected uh, directly with uh, 14 colleges in bombay uh, six schools uh, skill development center university and uh, and of course a hospital so all this not for profit activity and all that helps me to connect with a different segmentation of people quite diverse from the real estate as a business and right. this opportunity is there and then of course the data centers which my son now heads the entire business along with uh, mr sunil gupta and uh, which is now a trend setter in this country so Truly. it's uh, doing a fantastic uh, new business so i think in the next couple of years great opportunities are going to grow so when i was young there were hardly any opportunities mm. in terms of new businesses and now and today look at it look at media look at you look <laughs> at all of us over here in this podcast so i think opportunities are plenty right. the country is growing the uh, gdp is 7% i predict 8% for 2024 uh, not 7 but uh, because the way we are growing and uh, mm, i think uh, it's a great country to and be in time. today and great the time, time is fantastic so i love it absolutely i totally agree to that um uh, sir so, so talking about data centers right and this entire innovation uh, we just heard recently that um, cm yogi adityanath mentioned about the first ai city in lucknow what's your take on that i think yogi adityanath ji has uh, done a paradigm not in religion but in development <laughs> So I think uh, you know people look at him because of the clothes that he wears that uh, his vision would be more in terms of the religious side but believe you me the man is different mm. uh, he's energetic he's strong he's visionary he's clear and uh, far sighted so when uh, Darshan wanted to set up a data center in North India we were looking at various states but the kind of support we got in UP is unbelievable at the time of covid the kind of support we got as a company and the connectivity which with we had uh, the speed and efficiency with which the government and the machinery acted unprecedented so i i'm really proud of the way up is growing and considering that it was a ba- very backward state up till now yes. wow uh, you know there's too much progress so i think the opportunity on data is great we now produce more data in india than the united states and china combined today Truly? today wow and in the next couple of years uh, it's going to grow uh, exponentially yes so the requirement of data center is growing and you know a lot of our data today is mined outside india mm. so uh, i think all that will move to india we are more cost effective we are better in many ways sure. in terms of handling data centers so i think the opportunity in the data centers as a business looks very bright in the next couple of years and and our company is there so while you were talking about business real estate diversification innovation i couldn't help but admire you know your fitness game your style quotient is on point you would give any 30 year old a run for money so how how do you really maintain that you know while managing this entire real estate empire okay let's hear a contrarian story <laughs> 846 47 niranjandhirandani gets invited to champion school my alma mater as an old boy in that school at 47 46 year old boy for a school <laughs> i go there and it's a sports day and they have an old boys race and the old boys race is 50 meters only and i participate in it and when i finish 50 meters i'm panting 
because many years I was so busy working from morning to night that I had no time to really take care of fitness. And I suddenly realized, I said, if this is at 46, 47, what's going to happen when I go 60? I, I don't know what's going to happen to me. And that's the time when I took up the fitness route and got into a gym and then slowly uh, looked after myself and then run. And uh, now I do marathons, yes. I do running, I do the gym regularly, I do yoga. And uh, so at uh, 73, I'm, I just did uh, the four kilometers the marathon, this last yes. uh, week. And I want to do the six and 10 or wow. 10 in the Tata Marathon very soon. And uh, I'm, I become all right. So, uh, you know, but I went through that process when uh, I didn't take care of my fitness wow. and it was really bad. And uh, 20 years ago, I had also another health problem and I didn't think I would survive. Oh but God. I had and I did. So I'm here. <laughs> yeah, thank you so God. Yes. So great, very inspiring that is. Yes. So better late than never. If you haven't taken care of your health today till now, whatever is your age, you can always start it. I did and I'm better. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. Um, so we've had an interesting chat. In fact, very meaningful, very insightful. And it's time now to also get an audience into this conversation. So we move on to a segment called Janta Unfiltered, which is where we ask audiences to send in questions and we pose it to the guest as is, because as you're aware, this podcast is all about unfiltered conversation. Sure. So I'm going to pick up one and read it to you with your permission. Please. Great. All right. So we have this question from Nitin from Pune. And he says, it's not often we see billionaires opting for public transportation. <laughs> Your recent video of taking a local train from Mumbai to Ulasnagar has gained significant attention. How was your journey? What inspired this decision? And what message do you hope to convey to the common man through your experience of commuting on a local train? <laughs> oh, so let me tell you the story of that. Uh, I have uh, four colleges in Ulasnagar, which I had promised to go to. So I was in my office in Pawai and I looked up Google map and it said, two hours, 40 minutes to reach Ulasnagar. And I said, my God, I, I, Crazy. I, how am I going to reach there, uh, finish all my lectures, come back? And I had to catch a flight to Dubai in the evening. So I said, that's not going to be feasible. Now, what do I do? To the, should I tell them to cancel the trip, cancel the lectures? I said, so many students, so many people all waiting to be there. Programs done in four colleges, some Sindhi program uh, for a food festival oh. and all that was there. So I said, you know, how can I miss the food too? But uh, having said that, I, I, I said, yeah, you know, how long will the train take to go? And uh, somebody said, uh, it should take one hour, 10 minutes. So I said, fantastic. And then somebody said, there's an air conditioned local now. I said, wow, that sounds good. Where do I catch the train from? Because Vikroli is very close. And somebody, there's an app. I didn't know that also, that there is an app. So we looked up the app and we found that uh, there's a fast train, but it was from Ghatkopa. So we kind of rushed to Ghatkopa. And then I, I had to wait for five, seven minutes for getting the train, the fast train, and got into this air conditioned train in the, at Ghatkopa, and I was in Ulasnagar in one hour, 10 minutes. Wow. But in the train, a lot of people recognized me, sure. which surprised me because I didn't think so many people in the locals would recognize me, and they did. So we had people doing selfies, people taking photographs. There was a publisher from Ulasnagar who did an interview with me. <laughs> in the train? <laughs> oh yeah, in the train. And it was quite fascinating. And I had two staff members also with me. And there was one person who came to me because he said, Saab, aap to train mein kabhi jaate nahi hai. Log aapko dhakka dukki karenge, to hum saath mein aapke chalte hai. To we had another, I had an escort too. Luckily, I didn't need it. The, train was quite fine. Oh. It was an off-peak time, I think. That's why there oh. wasn't too much of a rush. But it was fascinating journey. One hour, five minutes. We were in Ulasnagar oh. from Ghatkopa. So, wow, I was there and everybody was quite shocked. Uh, the college is just across from the railway station, the Chandipai complex. So I went there oh. and it was fun and I was quite fresh and uh, not disturbed with the, the car journey, oh. which could have been horrendous, I think. Oh. And then we finished all the programs and I said, 
now i want to go back by train <laughs> 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 so nothing doing uh, you know I, i was stopped i had a principal of one of the colleges escort me because she thought that you know how can the trustee and the provost of the university travel by train <laughs> and my god it just uh, the the news went viral i mean somebody recorded it and as fun i put it on the sure. uh, on the social media chat and i got only 3.2 crore hits wow <laughs> unbelievable wow really bhavna if i thought that i would get 3.2 crore hits on social media i promise you i would have traveled by local train 5 years ago <laughs> But this was something I didn't didn't realize in terms of what can happen in social media. It's quite crazy, truly, actually. Truly, truly wonderful. That anecdote was so interesting. I'm sure Nitin had a good time hearing this. And thank you so much for sharing the question. Thank you so much, sir, for answering it so well and telling us the entire details. Um, so you know, you spoke about the train journey, and one thing that comes out is speed. Right. So we move on to our next segment, which is all about speed. It's all about being witty, which you already are. So this segment is called sixty second spin, which is basically a fun segment where I'm going to put put across questions to you, and you have to answer it as fast as you can. And let's see how many questions you can answer within sixty seconds. Okay. So are you ready? You've taken the train journey. Are you ready to go on a spin with me today? Okay. Great. So I'm going to read the question. Let's begin. Smart homes or heritage residences. Smart homes. Perfect. What's your go-to dance move when you've just closed a major real estate deal? Oh, uh, we rock. It doesn't matter what move. <laughs> totally. What's the most adventurous thing you've ever done? Hmm. Uh, the next challenge, for example, uh, the next challenge, like uh, for seventy. Two years of my life, I never sang a single song. I never ran, played a musical instrument. We are not the kind of uh, singing uh, musical person. So I've learned now the organ, and I know how to sing six or seven Hindi songs. Wow! Would you want to recite At something? At age seventy-two? No, no, no. <laughs> another one. <laughs> so Who, always something new. Who is your mentor or go-to person for any kind of advice? And what lesson have you learned from him or her? I always look for mentors. Uh, my father, till he was alive, was a great mentor for me. I would meet him every day in the morning at six a.m., and uh, I learned a lot from him right at, up to the age of ninety-six. The uh, Dada J P Waswani was a guru and a mentor for me, yes. and he taught me so many things. And when once or twice, when I was really thought-provoking and difficult thought process in a social matter, in some of the institutions, then I went to him, and bang, he had an answer. as to which direction to do but i do look for a lot of people who are who can be mentors mentors in real estate or people who have done exceedingly well so i keep on looking for mentors to find out what i can learn from whom sometimes you you'll be surprised you can learn a lot from ordinary people and they suddenly tell you something extraordinary sure. so i learn from everybody great if your life had a tagline what would it be oh <laughs> uh I don't know it's very difficult for me to put a tagline to myself but uh, I love people interesting very interesting and I think that's the journey of your life last question sir what's your favorite sindhi food <laughs> dal pakwan <laughs> so is mine okay <laughs> great and with that we come to the end of this segment you did really well thank within you. 60 seconds thank you for it and with that we come to our next and the last segment which is called expert edge in that segment i would like you to share with us a quick thought on why leadership fails and one mantra for being an effective leader a leadership can fail because anybody can fail but um, good leaders have a lot of quality in in them they uh, they work hard they are committed they have a fire in the belly they are passionate they want to learn be a constant learner they want speed they want uh, to look for precedence of what they can do uh, they see opportunities and grab it uh, they're willing to accept change you know a lot of us get comfort zone the indian uh, idea of chalta hai is not in a good leader uh, 
people who are highly committed and all that and always wanting to grow always wanting to learn so i think uh, the leadership is all about uh, so many factors which really make good leaders and great leaders and uh, i think uh, we see that all the time in different aspects of life which you do the best leader in the world could now be prime minister modi can you imagine mm -hmm. a chai wala becomes the prime minister of india and all still wants to be an international leader he doesn't rest over here yes. he's on to it all the time so i think great leaders are having so many good qualities and we always learn from them and it's always fine to keep learning thank you so much sir thank you. i think this was very very insightful truly meaningful and i'm sure our audiences will take a lot from it thank you so much to the audiences for staying put i'm sure we you've been inspired by this entire conversation and also know that you know there are endless possibilities for you out there so go get it thank you thank, thank you bhavana hope you had great fun like we did i do too thank, thank you. you sir thank you closing this chapter on our insightful conversation with dr niranjan hiranandani hope you've been inspired to envision the endless possibilities that are out there for you thank you for being there on this transformative journey please feel free to comment like and share if you have any specific guest or topic in mind do let us know via your comments we would love to hear from you stay tuned for our next episode where we bring to you some intriguing stories with a dash of quirkiness until then all you leaders out there keep slaying keep inspiring and continue leading the way this is me bhavna lalchandani signing off